I'm Jeff Chandler for the events calendar. Suppose that you're distributing tickets to an event with limited venue seating, such as a theater or seated banquet, and you'd like to offer your attendees the option to choose their own row or table in advance. You can easily accomplish this task using the stock options and multiple ticket types available with events tickets. There are two ways to do it, and we're going to check them out in today's video. We actually offer an add-on to the events calendar called Eventbrite Tickets. This add-on is designed to sync events between WordPress and Eventbrite, but it has the bonus of being able to support seating charts since that is an Eventbrite feature for Eventbrite professional and premium accounts. If you have a professional or premium account, then you'll have access to Eventbrite's seating charts feature and can follow their detailed tutorial on how to set it up. We'll have a link to that in the video description below. We'll use a simple seating chart example to demonstrate how to set up your ticket groups. The graphic shows three rows, A, B, and C with a total of nine seats per row, as you can see based on the screenshot on your screen. Now we can either create a new event. In this case, we're going to edit an existing event. And because I have a screenshot of the seating chart, what I did was I edited the event, created a image block, and I moved the image of the seating chart down above to where the tickets are that I added. And as you can see, I added three different tickets, ticket types, where I have row A, row B, and row C. And then I made sure that a maximum occupancy was set to nine, which allows me to easily keep track from the back end of how many tickets have been sold per row. This image shows some example fields for selling tickets using Event Tickets Plus and WooCommerce. But this process should be much the same for allocating free seats via RSVP. Here, I've named my ticket type by the associated row on our seating chart, and I've set the available stock to nine, which is the number of seats available in this row. This allows me to set different pricing tiers for different seating sections if desired, and limit stock for each section so that tickets of a given type cannot be oversold. Once you finish entering the details for your first ticket section, click Save This Ticket to commit your changes. After repeating this process for all of your tickets, you can verify that everything looks correct then scroll up and click the publish button to save all of your tickets and publish them to your site. So now you're all finished. What we're looking at is what an event looks like configured with the ticket sections. And as you can see here on the front end, here's the image of the seating chart I've added. And right below that is the area where people can purchase tickets. They can click on plus for each section and then they can get tickets. And this allows you to easily keep track of what's going on in the back end, what sections are still available, what sections have seats, and, and it prevents you from overselling as well. We hope that this tutorial has shown you how simple it is to adapt events tickets and event tickets plus to meet specific ticketing needs such as these. Feel free to use this guide as a reference for developing your own ticketing solutions. Thank you for watching and as always, please don't hesitate to pay us a visit at our help desk if you have any additional questions.